<clears throat> Alright guys, how's it going? East Banglers out here. Today we're talking all about fishing. Today we're specifically talking about fly fishing, using flies on a spinning reel. We're talking about this because, you know, it seems to be something a lot of people are finding out, something people are wanting to learn about, but there's really um, not a whole lot of people that I've you know, seeing that have been forthcoming with a lot of information on this. I've seen a couple people try to come out and tell you guys a little bit, a little bit about, you know, how to uh, approach this technique, but they've all kind of fell flat in my opinion. So I wanted to do my own. Um, there's some other people out there with um, some basics, but I want to talk today and break down really advanced beginner moderate techniques and things I've noticed work well with time on the water. So today we're fishing flies, right? You got your spinning reel and you got a spinning rod, but let's talk about what you want exactly. You want a light, an extra, you know, ultra light, uh, medium light will work. You want a longer rod when you're in a lake or on a big river, but you want a shorter rod when you're surrounded by cover Maybe you're on a stream, maybe you're on a creek, maybe you're on a lake or something like that, but you've got a lot of cover. You've got trees around you, surrounding you. It's gonna be a lot easier to you know, go in with that shorter rod. So that's the first thing is, some of these places you're gonna to go to, you're gonna want a shorter rod, more in that six foot, right? And then there's gonna be some places you're gonna go where trying to cast out further, you're gonna want those seven and eight footers. Now, you know the action. Let's talk about a reel. Now, you want a size 10 reel, you can get away with a 20, but you want a size 10. I have some that are rigged up with size five reels. So five is exceptional, 10 and 20 will work. I would stick with size five and size 10. So sometimes these uh, different companies will repackage it instead of a five or a 10, they'll call it, um, you know, a 5,000, you know, stuff like that. Um, what is it, 2,000, I, whatever, stands for 20, whatever. So, the size of the reel, I like the smallest available on the market. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, why do I want the smallest? Because you want the shortest, you want the, the, the smallest gear ratio, and those gear ratios are like 521, 541, and you're gonna say, what's that, you know, one gear ratio gonna make that much of a difference and it is because when you're fishing the fly a lot of times people overwork their flies and that's not what you want to do when you're throwing a fly in a particular situation you're looking at it from a high percentage point of view you're going to want to throw in that fly to target a and you're going to want to make sure that when that fly hits it's going to create some kind of a reaction bite if you're not going off a reaction bite you're gonna to wanna to work that fly. You're gonna to wanna to dance that fly or get that fly to work, but in a very natural way. So let me talk to you guys about how to do that. So one of the first things I like to do when I'm fishing a fly on a spinning reel is I like to drop shot one. I like to drop shot that fly. Um, and one of the things about drop shotting a fly that a lot of people don't tell you is do not work the fly. You're gonna throw that fly out on the smallest weight you can get away with. Sometimes it's a, a 16th or a 32, an eighth ounce uh, sinker. You're gonna throw it out. You're gonna let that fly get to where it wants to be. You're gonna hold your rod stick, your, your stick up. You're gonna basically do a dead stick motion. And what this is gonna allow is that fly to naturally move with the current underwater. It's gonna make a lot of those fish come up. They're gonna inspect it. Sometimes you're gonna get bit right away. Now, other times, what I like to do is go from a tight line where I'm just holding the rod up with a dead stick and I wanna drop that fly. So essentially I wanna just drop my wrist an inch or two, a little bit of slack line, allow that fly to slow, slow fall in the water column. A lot of times this gets a lot of strikes. Raise your rod back up, back to a tight line. Very natural, very much not moving the fly um, or overworking the fly. So, you know, a lot of times I see people go out and they just, uh, 
to throw in a top water fly. And that's a lot different. When you start working things um, underwater, especially when you're drop shotting them, you want to slow everything down. Four to eight pound mono, fluoro, either way. It's going to work good. You're going to go ahead and you're going to cast out your to your desired area. And unlike other drop shot techniques, this is not a shake. This is not something you want to just shake. It does not look natural. A lot of times, if you have the wrong type of sinker or it's got too much flash, that's going to grab a lot of attention and they're not going to be as apt to go after that fly. It's almost like they can tell that fly's not real. So there's times when it seems like the fish are very weary, very much tuned in. And, you know, after you get done throwing dozens of flies, that makes sense. So when you're using a spinning rod and reel with a fly, drop shotting is not just effective for bluegill and sunfish, crappie, bass, trout, stripers. It's, it's pretty effective for just about, in my opinion, anything that's going to swim. Anything that swims is going to be attracted to that. There's so many different types of flies, um, so concepts or variables are endless. But we're going to talk today about what kind of flies you want to use on that rig. You know, you're going to want to use bigger flies. You're going to want to stick to one inch to four inch. Now, they don't make a lot of those bigger flies. You're going to have to get those custom hand tied. Now, you're going to want to stick with certain colors. So this is going to be within the realm of fishing these flies all around. Black, number one. Brown, number two. And number three is going to be olive. Keep it simple, guys. You don't need a thousand colors. You don't need a hundred. You don't need 20. You don't need 10. 10 good, but you don't need it. So a white fly, uh, for me, in a lot of situations, you'd think would be great, but it underproduces. So... Just remember those core colors are very essential, very productive, and they catch the majority of the fish. Now, let's talk about what uh, everybody knows. You can throw a bobber and put a fly in at just that length. You can put a thingamabobber. You can put a strike indicator. Different fashions of strike indicators, whether they may be foam circles or small little attachments, clip-ons, thingamabobbers, anything. There's, a, there's about a dozen on the market if not two um just uh you know you can use yarn as a strike indicator works very well it's popular in europe um that's a really good technique but everybody knows about that so very similar very much similar for everything i just said about the other one now i'm going to move on we're going to talk about split shotting with a fly on a spinning reel. Nobody really talks about this. It's very effective. It's as old school as you get. You know, a lot of people, they say, how am I going to fish? The water's moving so fast. How am I going to get this? This isn't going to work. What you're going to do is you're going to split shot. You're going to throw it out. You're going to see how it reacts. You're going to start off with, you know, a particular weight. You're going to go up if it's too light. It's very simple, very methodical. A lot of times you can cover water with this method. You can get your bait in and out of pockets and um, if you're on a lake, this really works well just allowing that water to take that fly or cruising, you know, like a steady drift, um, a controlled drift, if you will, um, trolling a fly, things of this nature. So keep all that in mind. Another, you know, thing that people underestimate about the split shot is you know, how old school, but how effective it still is. So if you guys haven't got some split shot and got a fly, generally you start off with about an eight inch leader and you're going to go all the way to about a 24 inch leader. Depending on the situation, you're going to vary. You're going to play around and experiment. I can't tell you guys enough about how effective this is <clears throat> for anything that swims. You know, they make um, a lot of different flies and some of these flies swim. Some of these flies are designed to be stripped in the water column. Some are designed to swim naturally, like fish, glide, or a natural S-wave. Some of these baits are designed to do nothing. 
some of them are designed to uh, essentially have action built in or need that action manually addressed. So I hope this video helps you guys. We're talking about flies. We're talking about spinning reel outfits. Um, and we're talking about getting away with uh, catching a whole bunch of fish on light rods with large flies, drop shotting, split shotting, and using a float of some sorts. Really hope this helps, guys. Stay tuned for more. We got more coming.